Hi, welcome to Inspire Blessings with Jean Marie Prince. And I want to introduce, and thank you so much uh, for coming on my show, Pastor Bobby Lloyd. And um, I want to kind of give you, a, you kind of, uh, an overview, a description of who Pastor Bobby is. And he's a native of Rockville Center, Long Island. Uh, Pastor Bobby Lloyd has experienced firsthand what it is like to be a, in bondage to pornography and to drugs. And as an executive director of Long Island Citizens of Community Values, he helps others not only understand the damage pornography can do, but also break its strange stra uh, stranglehold on their lives. While Pastor uh, Lloyd currently works closely with the law enforcement officials and politicians, he was once on the other side of the law. His role as one of the primary suppliers of heroin to Long Island and parts of New York City in the 1970s and 80s landed him in prison several times in 1976. He received a life sentence under Governor Rockefeller, uh, Rockefeller's drug law. Um, it was during his stint in prison that Pastor Lloyd uh, rekindled a friendship with current wife and partner Diane who shared with him her own experience of breaking the stronghold of drugs. Um, his behavior in prison earned him lifetime parole, but after being released, he quickly reestablished his drug business, which continued for several more years. Finally, in 1984, he entered Brooklyn Teen Challenge, which helped him put his drug habit behind him and moved into a new phase of life. Has the Lord helped pioneer Long Island te First Teen Challenge program and has since reached thousands of young people with a motivation message about how one man can turn his life around. Definitely, you know. As a result of his work, Pastor Lloyd received a pardon from his lifetime parole. Since 1994, uh, Pastor Lloyd has served as executive director of the Long Island Citizens for Community Values, where he helps Long Island Islanders uh, live better lives free from the negative influences of pornography and the sexualized message of the culture. Wow, was that a mouthful, right? Yeah. And that was just really, actually, just an overview of his life, of the ups and downs of the choices you have made. So I'm going to ask you questions of how your life had many crooked roads. So Pastor uh, Bobby, hearing about how you got into drugs and pornography, what was your neighborhood and family dynamics like? Um, did you blame it on your environment? No, because uh, I was brought up by two hard-working parents that really cared for me. Okay. I have a brother. He became a college professor. Mm -hmm. I became a professional criminal. And there was no need for it, because I had a, a, a degree in automotive. I could have, and I did, I could have gone to any shop and gotten a mm -hmm. job and mm -hmm. done well and made a good wage. But um, I'll never forget one day I was working at a gas station and this guy pulls up in a beautiful, beautiful Cadillac. Mm -hmm. And uh, he says, fill it up. And so I go to fill it up and I happen to look through the back window and there were two gorgeous women in there. Mm -hmm. I've never seen any women look this perfect in my life. Okay. So I, I, I decided to wash the windows for something I never do in people's cars, <laughs> just to get a better look and I did. And when, I, when when the car filled up, the the guy, the gentleman I was driving, it says, uh, "Hey man, you Bobby Lloyd?" I go, "Yeah." He says, uh, "What's going to take a ride, me?" I said, "Man, I'm working." He said, "Whatever I pay you, whatever you make here, I pay you double. Just come and go with me." So I went inside, told my boss I was sick, and I, right. I was going home. Right. So I jumped in the, in the car with him and these two young ladies, and I couldn't believe it. And all we did was, he said, "All I want you to do is to uh, make sure no one takes what I'm picking up." And right. I didn't have a clue what he was doing. Right. I didn't have a clue at all. Right. How so, old were you, you said? Hmm? How old did you say how old you were? Ooh, 20, 21. Okay. Yeah, maybe 21, okay. that's right. And uh, he, uh, <laughs> so I, I rolled with him. He just kept picking up these little brown bags. It looked mm -hmm. like lunch bags. Mm -hmm. And I'm throwing them in the trunk, throwing them mm -hmm. in the trunk. And he just tell me, keep your eyes open. If you see anybody coming towards me, you got it. I mean, saying something like that should make somebody think, like, something, something's wrong here. Something's going on sh that's shady. Nah, no, you weren't thinking at 21? No, listen, I, he's, he's going to hmm. pay me. Double what I made at that station. You think I'm thinking? And, and, and I, I understand, but you must have thought to yourself, you know what? I think there's a criminal at that painting right now. No, but, not really, because I, I, I can handle myself, <laughs> and he wanted, he wanted a bodyguard, and he got one. Sure, okay. You know, so we we, all, we did that for about four hours, just right. riding to Manhattan and Queens, picking right. these brown bags and stuff. And finally, when around 10 o'clock that night, we got back to his place, which was gorgeous. 
Uh, we put all the bags out on the on this bed, and uh, and I looked at it, it was a bag bags full of money. All it was money. I don't know how much mm-hmm. money it was there. Mm-hmm. Could have been two hundred thousand dollars. I don't right. know. Right. But I said, whoa. So mm-hmm. he throws me a thousand dollars and mm-hmm. said, listen, if you ever want to work for me, you know how to reach me. Right, right, right. So I went back to where I was at and. I thought about it for about a hot two minutes, and I said, yeah, I want a job. Okay, now at this point, when you're given that type of temptation, did you have God kind of saying, hey, you know what, this is wrong? Or did you even have God in no, your life at that point? No, I didn't have God in my life. I, okay. was, I was still out there, you know, and, uh, and, and when, he, when he hired me, I liked what I was doing. I mean, this it was no more grease. I was a mechanic. Oh, yeah. No more grime. How tempting, yeah, <laughs> you know? I, I can make as much money as I want. Right. So I worked for him for about, about two years. Mm-hmm. And then uh, I told him I'm going to go on my own. Mm-hmm. So he said, well, it's up to you now. I said, you served me well. So he gave me enough to start my right. own, and I did. Right, So right. I went from Nassau County to Suffolk County. And so this Nassau. was, what was it that you were actually making money from? Selling heroin. And which is such a big academic right now on Long yes. Island? Yes, Okay. yes. But, the, 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 but on Long Island now, Heroin is on the rise. Oh yeah, because you of hear it on the, the news. oxycodone, you know the, the the pills that the doctors are prescribing, they sell them on the street, and the the price is so high, kids can't afford it. Right. So the drug dealer takes heroin, mix it with some kind of garbage, and give it to these kids, and they take it and get high with it. Think they're doing straight up heroin, yeah, and they're not. Yeah, but even if it's straight up heroin, it's still not good. I mean, what are the effects of heroin? Well, heroin, you know. When I was doing heroin, I, I, did, I did heroin for a number of years mm-hmm. before I even realized that I had a habit. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. And, but heroin back then, it was, it was, the only thing I was in it was milk sugar, right, that you used to cut it with, and then you, and then you get high. Today, they use all kinds of synthetics, so it, it, mm-hmm. it attacks the body differently. Mm-hmm. There's a problem today with the, with the heroin, how it's being made, and the, and the kids that's buying it. They don't have a clue what's going on. The parents don't have a clue what's going on. Right. And it's up to us to make sure that we make people understand this is something deadly and dangerous and we need to start looking at it. We here on Long Island are so interested in making money mm-hmm. and, 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 and working two jobs and trying to keep up with the Joneses. Right. We're losing our kids. Right, oh yeah. Big yep. time, we're losing our kids. Yeah, and it's not only heroin, it, it, it's crack, it's, uh, you know, it's all these drugs that's just very bad for your body. God didn't but, design your body to take in all these uh, bad chemicals. Yeah, with the, with the crack cocaine, it's just a, a lower form of cocaine. Well, either way, all that stuff is just absolutely no good, and it's not, yeah, and it's not good to be um, even having a business to make money and profit from getting other people... No. to take a, being addicted to something like this that could really destroy their lives yeah, so it, now let's speed it up a little because um, at, at what point do you realize oh my goodness you know do you get caught first or do you realize you know that this is wrong well no I made up my mind that I was going to sell drugs the rest of my life because I I like the lifestyle mm-hmm. beautiful can, women the pornography women, right cars. is that were you involved in pornography at that yes, point? Yes, yes, because uh, one of the guys, a couple of guys I knew were, were pimps from New York, and they were going down to Hunt's place, and, mm-hmm. and that's where I got introduced to the, to the prostitution, and, and 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 got a little touch of the of the pornography industry, mm-hmm. you know, and so it was it was difficult at first, but then like anything else, you become desensitized. Mm-hmm. It's like with drugs. Did you fear death at all? Like, you know, sometimes you hear people who are in the drug world and, you know, you got to worry that someone's going to come after you and kill you because of the fact that, you no, know. No, I didn't. Right. I, I mean, there were, when I first started, you know, I thought about it, but I didn't. I surrounded myself with guys that, you know, they were like me. Mm-hmm. You know, so who's going to come up against us? Wow. You know, right. and, and then that's when I ventured off into New York City and come to find out there's a bigger world out there. Sure. A, a much bigger world than I had imagined. So now, you're doing all this. How many years has this happened for? It's been, I was 21 when I started. Um, about 26, I was still in the business. Now, you get arrested? That's yeah, when you start yeah. to realize well, that? Well, I got arrested when I was 15 years old oh. because I had, a, I had a, a, <clears throat> a, 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 a rifle that was stolen from a school and a friend of mine, a so-called friend of mine, gave it to me to hold for him. Mm. He got busted and told him I had the gun. So the police came to my house 
and my father being a law-abiding citizen as he is, his mm -hmm. son, if you got the gun, give it to him. I said, I don't have no gun, I'm not giving it to him. If you ever see my father, you know, you don't lie to him. He was 6'2", mm -hmm. 230 pounds. He's the only man I know that could take an oil filter off a car with his bare hands. Mm -hmm. He said, I'm, not, I'm telling you, if you got it, if I give him that gun, Dad, they're going to lock me up. Oh, no, you're not. No, you're not. As soon as I went and got that gun, they locked me right up. Right. And, and that was the beginning <laughs> of my jail time. Jail time. And, right. and it just escalated from from that to assault. I, I, I would fight. I like to fight, you know. And I got a couple of assault charges and things like that. But it was, it was part of it. It sounds like if I would have met you back then, I would have walked on the other side of the street in fear. Yeah. I've, I've had, um, I, you know, not, I, it's, it's, it's a mix, it's a, it's a mixed bowl here because I've had some women come up to me and go, you know, years later, I've not changed right. anything, they go, you know, I would have gone out with you if I was afraid of you. Mm -hmm. I've had guys tell me that, you know, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. I wanted to hook up with you if I was afraid of you, you know. Mm -hmm. I didn't see my, I didn't see that part of me. Mm. You know, I, I have guys come back to me and tell me stories. I don't even believe that, that, that I did. Right, right. But I know it's real because they were there. Right. Okay, so now, when does God come into your life? Well, when I was uh, in uh, in prison, I was uh, kind of doing a two-year, two-year, three-year sentence when uh, a young lady by the name of Diane mm -hmm. uh, Jack came up to visit me now. I've been knowing the Jack family all my life. Mm -hmm. uh, we ended up by getting married, mm -hmm. you know, so. Right. And I know her brothers, and they were, they were like family to me. You know, the Jack family were, I mean, they, they took everybody in off the street that was out there. Right. And being a white family, you know, mm -hmm. it, was, it was just it was just strange. Sure. So what happened, that they lived on the, on the borderline of Rockwood Center and, and Rockwood Center, and the, the projects and the nice area. So, but, when you start bringing hoodlums in your home, they, they start stealing from you. So I kind of protected their home. Because a couple of guys broke in a couple of mm -hmm. times, and I, I was able to get all the stuff right, back. You right. know? And, you know, so so she she knew me growing up, and, and she had gotten saved. Mm -hmm. So she decided to take this trip up to Woodburn, New York, mm -hmm. to visit me at Woodburn Correctional mm -hmm. Facility. Mm -hmm. They're telling me about the Lord Jesus Christ. Right. But I thought she was cute. Mm -hmm. You know, she was a very attractive young lady. And she was telling me about the Lord, and I'm listening. And she would always bring me this chocolate custard pie. Mm -hmm. there, you don't get that. <laughs> you don't get much up there, right? <laughs> yeah, and I, I didn't get all that because the guards took some of it. It's much more like it's all blended. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and so she kept coming, you know, mm -hmm. and, and I listened to her, and I even went to a Bible study mm -hmm. up there, you know, after she came. And and then what happened, I got released from prison. That, and that was at what age? Um, so that 28, something like that. Okay, seven years old, okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, 28. And, uh, so what happened, I, I got released mm -hmm. because they found out that the Rockefeller law was illegal. I just happened to be, grace of God, mm -hmm. you know, got released and and I went, I, I went right back in the business again. You know, I, mm. was, I was back on the street about three hours and I was looking. Now, did Diane know at that time no, that you were no, back? No, no, no. She didn't know I was even out of jail yet. Oh, okay. You know, so so I, I went and I began to, um, you know, build up my drug business again mm -hmm. and started and built really fast because I, I knew the right connection I just had to just had to get there right within a week I was back in the business again I had my car my apartment money women right. everything you want everything I wanted so it was right there and that's what we did didn't you think to yourself you know I don't want to go back to jail no and you didn't care no. you, you, once you get in jail you know you just, you just take it, it you know what I actually did you know I actually told myself that jail is just like working on a regular job Jail is like going on vacation. Over your head, you get food. That's right. Oh, there's a lot of things that you're giving up for that yeah, restriction. But, but you know what happens? You become hardened. You know, and you kind of write those things off. But yeah. it was more so, I became I became desensitized to yeah. a lot of things. Sure. When do you come to accept Jesus Christ in your life? Uh, Diane kept bugging me. Come on, go to church with me. Come on, go to church mm -hmm. with me. And she did. And I finally, one day, I went. And um, I went to this big church in Massapequa. And it was packed. Right. Music was awesome. Mm -hmm. You know, pastor came out dressed like me. So I knew he had to be all right. You know, <laughs> and uh, drove my back, drove the same car I drove. You know, yeah. and uh, so I kind of liked it, you know. And, mm -hmm. and, and he liked my making that money, too. So I would give money. And, 
<laughs> you know, I thought, hey man, I can do this. Right. You know, I, mean, I can do this. This is this is cool. This is my kind of. This is my next gig. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I told him, you know, I told him, I said, this is all right. So I started going. I started going, you know, go to church with her. And then uh, we got married mm -hmm. because she thought I had stopped okay. my business. Okay. And she uh, thought you also became a real Christian at that yeah, point, maybe. Yeah. Okay. But you can't fool the Holy Spirit. No. I'm telling everybody, you can't fool the Holy Spirit. She knew. She knew something wasn't right. Right. So one day, she used to work on Wednesdays. Mm -hmm. And I used to have my crew come pick up this stuff on Wednesdays while she was at work, so there'd be no Right, right, right. And one day, the Holy Spirit spoke to her and said, um, Diane, why don't you go down to your husband's shop? I don't know where Moe's shop then. And she did. She pulled up. Mm -hmm. And she had to just take the two two looks. I mean, there was guys mm -hmm. there from Manhattan. Right, right. And they wasn't dressed like mechanics. And didn't have, and right. all of them had brand new cars, and you know, nice cars, you know. And stuff. Nice big gold, thick gold chains. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, so she, she looked at me and said, I'll see you when, when, when you get home. Right. So she left and you I took her uh -huh. yeah. So I didn't get home about 1 o'clock that morning. So I knew what was, what was going to happen. Mm -hmm. But she was, you know, she was a woman of God. And she just, um, she said, Either you stop this business or I'm going to have to leave you. Right, right. So she left. I couldn't stop. I was too mm. deep into it. Sure. I, I, and I like my sin. And that's the problem that a lot of people have. A sure. lot of us have. We like our sin. Right. Until you can get to hate your sin or either begin to look at Jesus to remove that sin, we're, we're never going to get it right. Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. so uh, one day I was in my apartment. There was a gang of us in there, probably about 10, 15 of us girls and guys and I was laying on my bed and the Holy Spirit said look around you you got everything you want houses cars money girls everything you want anything you want you're ahead of a, you're ahead of this, this group of guys and, but there's something still missing and he says it's like you got a hole in your chest mm -hmm. and I said yeah how do I get rid of it right he said the only way is through the Lord Jesus Christ Wow. So I got up. Well, how were you thinking, first of all, the fact that you're actually having a conversation with the Holy Spirit? You know what I'm saying? That you just. Well, you know, I, I think I was at a point in my life mm -hmm. where I wanted something different. Okay. And that's when the Lord stepped in mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. through the Holy Spirit and spoke to me and said, you know, I got what you need. Right, right. So right. I got up. I kicked everybody out of my house. And it's free too, as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right, right. You know, kicked everybody out of my house. Uh, turn the business over to the young guys that were working for me. Because mm -hmm. I'm sorry I did this day because the right. guy that was that was next to me who I really liked, I think about four years ago, he stayed in the business. Mm -hmm. He got killed in Washington, D.C. He got shot like five times in the back. You know? And, wow, uh, yeah. He was a young man too, you know. And, and you know, but but I, I got up and, and all of a sudden I get a phone call, it was my wife. So she goes, the Holy Spirit spoke to her, to her to come back home. Wow. It's amazing how God works, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. And then yeah. he goes out of his busy schedule because he knows the fact that this is yeah. what you need. Yeah. Yeah. And, and she did. She came back home. We started working on this thing. I started going to church. I quit the business. I did everything I had to do. Now, well, I was in the in the middle of quitting the business when um, one of the, one, there was four of us used to run together. And... They wanted me to go make a pickup one night, a Sunday night, I, and, and she just begged me not to go. Don't go, don't go, don't go, don't go. So I said, listen, you guys go get it. I'll catch you tomorrow. And uh, when they went to do the pickup, uh, there was two gunmen that just let loose on the car and started shooting. Yeah, that could have been you. Yeah, it killed the driver. Wow. Uh, the guy, my, my best friend out in the back, John, got caught a slug in the chest. And, and um, I would have been the one that probably been dead. Right. You know. Right. Right. But, right. You know. But you think you would wake up, mm -hmm. but I didn't. But the Holy Spirit was so good. Mm -hmm. He knew I needed deeper work. Sure. So he pulled me out of Massapequa right. right. into Sheepgate, Pastor Joe Sizek's church. Okay. This was the best thing that happened to me. Right. Um, because we're getting short of time, I want people to know about your uh, Long Island Citizens for Community Values. If you can be able to share about that. Yeah. We uh we we're working to reduce the um, sexualized culture that we're living in today. Mm -hmm. And we, we do that by many ways. Number one, just to make a long story short, 
Forty Second Street used to be the biggest sleaze run in, in mm -hmm. New York City. Mayor Giuliani got offered X amount of dollars to get rid of it so Disney could bring in entertainment. They didn't know what to do. They got they got in touch with my organization, another mm -hmm. organization, and um, we were able to give them the tools they need to shut down 42nd Street. You go to 42nd Street now, it's, it's family entertainment. Right. And then from that, other store, other counties begin to call me and ask me, what can we do? I begin to work along with the legislators, and I have to tell you, Long Island, New York, got some good legislators. Mm -hmm. They really want to, to, for Long Island, New York, to be uh, a place that people want to come. All right. So, is your is your organization uh, mainly helping pornography uh, as well as drugs? Is it all different types of addictions? What would you say? Well, we mainly LICCV focus on pornography because okay. I had an addiction. Okay. I had an addiction, and I don't know if I have time to explain to you what happened. Yeah. You yeah. know, maybe next time. Right, you know. right, but, right. But uh, but it was, it, it would be primarily, especially today, young kids, mm -hmm. 13, 14 years old, hooked on pornography. Sure. So what do we do with them? Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. doctors don't know what to do with them. Right. You know, Christian doctors still don't know what to do with them. And I'm not, I'm not, not professional. But this is something that's in our spirit that needs to be dealt with. Sure. I had a major problem in this area. Well, it, it can affect your, so your, ma <coughs> your marriage as well and things like that. Everything. And it's, and it's it something that God everything. doesn't, right. Yeah, it affects yeah. everything. Something that God doesn't condone either. Um, what, would you, what is your website if people want to be able to get more information on well, that? It's um, liccv.org. liccv.org. Yeah, liccv.org. Yeah. dot com. Right. Either dot net. We got all three because we knew that the enemy would get one of those and we'd be in trouble. Right. So, now, so that would be more for the sexual addiction, mm -hmm. and um, would you say the drug would be more the teen, uh, teen challenge? Teen challenge, yeah, I would suggest that um, you, you know get in touch with Billy Ramos on Teen mm -hmm. Challenge. I'll right. tell him to call you if you don't mind. Oh sure, no, that's yeah, fine. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. yeah it's, it's great. That's where you can get a great overview of the drug epidemic. Sure, I mean, you know, the thing is, is that uh, you know, there's so many temptations out there that are destroying people's lives, and um, Hate to say, the TV is the biggest influence. Yeah, it is. It's it's the main problem. I I had a major problem with it. I have to fight it now, not to, not to watch it. Right. Because you know, it just encapsulates you with every kind of thing you could possibly think of. Sure. So when you when you combine sexuality that God ordained mm -hmm. with the with the world's doing, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. got a mess. Yeah. And this is what we got today. We have a mess Big when it comes mess. to pornography. Sure. Until the Christians wake up and say. I want to do something about this, it's going to get worse. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Our young girls are out there becoming prostitutes or just having sex with anybody they want. The mm -hmm. young guys are being torn apart as well because mm -hmm. their hearts are being broken. They think they found something. It's just a right. mess. But right. the only one that can straighten it out that, that keeps me going is the Lord Jesus Christ. Right, right. And you know what? Boy, has God done you a big favor because honestly, you know how many times you probably could have been shot or killed and things like that, and you would, I hate to say it, but you would have gone to hell, you know, because at that point you really didn't know Jesus Christ to know that he's your Lord and Savior, you know, well, he, and to he, understand. He's been good to me, I, and, I, and, I, and I, I, I'll tell you this one quick story, is that I had pancreatic cancer. Okay. And I didn't have a clue what it was. I, had, I didn't even know I even had it. I had an operation at Sloan Kettering. Dr. Brennan, best man. That was 14 years ago, 15 oh, years wow. ago. Oh, wow. Okay, right. yes. I'm still kicking, still alive. I don't, I don't have a lot of my internal yeah, organs, right. but, but they're hanging on, so I, right. knew, I knew it had to be a miracle. Wow. So if God could put it, could make this, yeah. I'm quite sure he can, he can turn right. it out. Well, to. you know what it is, is that God still wants to keep you around to get the message out there. Yeah. Well, you know, awesome. because you're definitely, um, you know, for people to see before and after picture, mm. it's a big one. So I'm glad and thankful that you came on my show to be able to share that. Well, and, uh, and you know, so also that people would know about, uh, you know, Long Island Citizens for Community Values. Um, I always like to give my guests as a thank you, uh, one of my inspirations that God had to bless me with. Mm -hmm. And I chose for you, God give me a strength. Inspire Blessings Books and Prints at gmarieprints.com. And I figured this hand this deals with addiction. Could be addiction to pornography, whether it's addiction with drugs and, and so on. And as we know that there's a lot of addictions out there. Um, so it's called God give me a strength. My world is so out of focus that I've become somebody I wish not to be. I have no strength to control my days. 
I've become addicted to the wrong things of the world, which are destroying my mind and soul, making me hurt the people I love. How could I have let this be? I've tried so many different ways, now realizing that nothing has worked for me. Am I searching in the wrong direction? I need to know for my own sanity. Now, Lord, I'm calling upon you to save me from further destruction in my life. Tell me, Lord, how can I do it? You are my only hope. Take this weakness from me, which I cannot control, and let my desires be focused on you. Then I hope to see your grace upon me, giving me your strength to overcome my weakness in this world you created for me. Lord, let your presence be known. Hmm. And it also says, Have mercy on, upon me, O Lord, for I am weak, O Lord. Heal me, for my bones are vexed. Psalm 6-2. So I'm going to give you this. Thank and you. Uh, again, thank you so much for uh, joining and continue to stay healthy. And uh, I keep on, you know, I don't know, because I, I know the fact that you were recently sick, right? Yeah. yeah so but, yeah, Robert, may, Robert, may God Robert. continue yeah. to bless you. Well, thank you for having me on your show. And I'm uh, looking forward to doing this again. Thank you. Bless you. And um, thank you so much for joining us today. Keep inspired blessings within arm's reach to help give you comfort when others are at a loss for words. Thank you and God bless. To accept and receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, please say this prayer. I know that I am a sinner who needs forgiveness. Jesus, please forgive me for all my sins and purify me. I know that you died and rose again to pay for my sins. I need you to be my Lord and Savior for the rest of my life. Thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. With man, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible.